Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Game and Going Deeper. I am Michael, and here we have Matt, Callan, and Reno. And uh, we're happy to have you here today again. And today we're talking about Habari Adi Adi, everyone's favorite yeah. topic, right? Yeah. So with uh, Callan. Callan, tell us what you have to say about your body. Oh my God, what don't I have to say about my body? So uh, this is like everything under the sun for the gay community. Like, I don't know about you guys, but for me, being gay and being in the gay community, it has revolved around body and like worshiping body and like being the mask of all mask men and having that Adonis body and looking a certain way and having a certain aesthetic and being a certain height. And like, if you don't fit these categories and check these boxes, you don't fit in, you don't belong. And I hate that. And it drives me crazy, especially since so many of us come with so much baggage. Um, for me, it's been really difficult personally because I grew up not overweight at the beginning, but I did get to about maybe almost 200 pounds when I was about 12, 13, 14. And that was like that time frame when you're kind of, you know, I was, I knew I was gay, but I was really coming to terms with it around that age and fighting against it. And then also being at school, that was like the really impressionable bullying years for me. So I was like the fat, overweight ginger kid who everybody could easily make fun of because I was just like a simple target because I was also clearly gay. And like, so I was just made fun of again and again and again. And it just drilled in this belief system in me that like, okay, I'm not worthy. I'm not worth it. I have no value because of all of these things. Um, as I grew up um, and started eating healthier and I, you know, got kicked out of my dad's, had to move in with my mom and she ate a lot healthier, my body weight naturally went down and I did, you know, start to grow into myself and I did get a lot taller. And so that helped stretch things out as well. But I've always struggled with this issue of because of who I am, because like I'm was an overweight kid and made fun of for being a redhead, like these personal values of mine didn't develop. And then I joined the gay community and I thought, okay, you know, I can finally be myself. I can finally put myself out there. I can finally just be free to be myself. And to an extent I could, but I like everything still revolved around what you looked like aesthetically. And I felt really disheartened because I wanted to connect with people on a genuine level. And it felt like a lot of it was so surface level that I, it just made me like cringe I was like this is gross like this takes me back to high school and this is such bullshit we all had to deal with it in high school why the fuck are we dealing with it again now um so I think a lot of the gay community has revolved around that kind of um aspect that like we have to look a certain way you have to have the abs you have to have the nice chest you have to have the arms and then I see all these guys who go out and do it and like like kill themselves trying to look a certain way and they're still not happy and they're still like driving themselves crazy with like anorexia and bulimia and body dysmorphia and we don't talk about it in the gay community because nobody wants to admit to it and it's complete bullshit because i can see it from a mile away when somebody's you know doing steroids like there's no natural way that somebody can get that massive and just like, no, this is totally all natural. Like, come on, guy. We know the difference between a natural body and like a steroid body. And then for us to just pretend like it's not happening and pretend like it's just a normal part of our community is complete bullshit. We need to address it. We need to start talking about it because there is a, the large portion of the gay community doesn't fit into that tick box. And we need to start normalizing loving everybody's body and those different varieties of bodies and I really love um that Canada's Drag Race this season for or the starting season has what they would say a plus size model on it because never have we ever seen a plus size and he's not even that big model on um a drag race show so the fact that they even took that step to be like no we need to start putting this out there and normalizing in some way I you know big applause to you guys but that's just like the first step of many like we need to start working on this so uh, I'm gonna get off my soapbox and get let you guys kind of jump in a little bit <laughs> well I feel like I have so so much to say about this particular topic especially <clears throat> so 
I was, I, I like when I was younger, I was like this gangly little thing, right? And and I sort of like filled out. And I'll never forget, I was I was back in my high school after I had graduated, and I was sitting in the gym, and I heard someone say in the background, "Is that Reno?" And and he comes up beside me, and he's like, "Oh my gosh, it is you! Like you've you've really filled out." And it felt really good to hear that in that moment because I just remember, like I, you know, my shoulders are a lot broader these days. They weren't so much back then. Um, but I would say probably from about I don't know eighteen or nineteen, and it's actually interesting to reflect on it because I don't know <clears throat> that it was a major issue for me until I. I came out and entered the gay community, but all of a sudden, like my body and my weight and my, um, yeah, like my physical appearance became this, this like big deal for me. Um, and I'm just going to throw this out there because I have no shame around it anymore, but I had an eating disorder in my 20s, like probably from, I don't know, like 18 or 19 until like my earlier 20s. And, um, you know, I would like eat food that probably wasn't so good for me to begin with, but it was sort of this like binge and purge thing where, you know, I'd eat like fast food or like junk food and stuff. And then I'd feel gross and um, like in my stomach, but also just in general. And, you know, and so I would make myself throw up. And <clears throat> there were all sorts of other strange things I did back then. Like, uh, you know, I went through the like wearing you know foundation on my face and like relaxing my hair and all these different things you know to like alter my appearance because I wanted to be desirable in the eyes of the majority and um you know and part of that was like striving to be really slim so for me it wasn't even about being jacked back then it was like I want to be this really skinny like twinkie gay and um to my detriment you know um it was it was it was not fun it was not healthy and i started to question like where are these beauty standards and physical sort of body standards coming from you know where did i get this from this isn't this isn't mine i don't feel this way um you know this doesn't feel true to me and it's toxic and it's unhealthy and so um <clears throat> I think as time went on, I, I just started to be more, become more comfortable in my own skin. And I think a lot of that has to do with, um, as I probably said on previous episodes, self-inquiry, you know, it's like, it's so valuable, just like checking in with myself and beginning to question where all of this is coming from, because it's, it's so insidious in, in a lot of ways, this um, unhealthy relationship that I, you know, I had and, and, and sometimes still experience um in relation to my body and and we as a society i think whether whether in the gay community and i think it's big there but even in in general you know i another thing i noticed as well is that i started holding myself to standards akin to the the beauty standards that like women hold themselves to and i thought that was really interesting you know it's like i, I found myself caring about my beauty and my appearance as much as women are are made to and so to go back to this idea of it being insidious, I look at, you know, magazines and, 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 and commercials and, and ads and just popular culture in general. And there's such an emphasis on the surface layer of our existence here. You know, it's all body all the time. It's all looks, all skin all the time. And yeah, again, I just started to question that. And in no way, shape, or form do I have it all sorted or figured, you know? Like, I, I've been, I was, I was saying before we started recording that I've spent a lot of time at the nude beach, and so this is, you know, this is a fun topic to talk about, because what I noticed about myself when I was on the nude beach um, is that even I still have this, like, dialogue going on in my mind where I'm scanning the beach and I'm looking at people's bodies and sometimes I've even gone to events where like I know we're going to be scantily clad and like I'm there and I'm sort of looking I'm scanning the room to see who's maybe a little less in shape than I am 
so that I can feel a bit better about the way that I look, right? And that's just me keeping it real, um, you know? And so even at the nude beach, I noticed I'm sort of looking at all the bodies. And what's funny is that I actually think everyone's beautiful, you know? And I, and I mean that. Like when I, when I look at someone who's maybe a bit more curvaceous or, or even a bit skinny or what have you, everything in between, like I can look at someone and see their beauty regardless. But for some reason, when I'm feeling vulnerable or insecure in my own body, I'm sort of scanning and making comparisons, not, 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 not to project negativity onto them, but sort of to feel better in my body, which is really, you know, which is really interesting. So um, it's, it's almost been uh, insightful and, and maybe healing in some capacity to have spent as much time at the nude beach as I have recently. Like yesterday will have been my third trip and today I'm actually going again later. So that'll be four. And just to like lie on the beach and notice all of the, you know, the bullshit that comes up in my, in my psyche while I'm sitting there, you know, like, oh, that guy's penis is bigger than mine. Or like, oh, you know, like, there's my ideal body there. Like, I can't wait to look like that at some point. Oh, you know, like, Mm -hmm all the things all the things so it's interesting I'm still figuring it out I'm still working through it in some moments you know and uh in closing I you know I would just say like (sighs) my relationship to my body started to change for the better um you know I think it was probably a couple maybe a few years ago I, I won this contest that a friend had put out for personal training. And I was so excited because I was in a space at that time where I made the choice to step into this, not because I hated the way I looked or I hated myself or my body, but because I loved myself and I wanted to see what was possible, you know, in my body. Like what, 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 what is my body capable of? you know, and, and, and how can I begin to create a body that matches my soul, you know, that matches my, my, my truest self outside of all of the uh, negative um, and self-deprecating ideas that I carry and project onto myself. And it ended up being the most remarkable experience. I learned so much about you know, all the different parts of the body and the muscles and how everything's connected. And then, you know, and then I was able to carry that like strength and confidence out into the world after my workouts. And so it was really this healthy and beautiful relationship to my body and to my physical fitness and to my physique. And that was one of my favorite moments, one of my favorite moments like in in my body, you know, so um, still a work in progress, but uh, way less shame you know it's like this is what I look like deal with it you know yeah I think that uh you said something that I want to touch on so before we started recording this I think we talked we chatted and I said to you guys that uh body is an interesting one for me because I get being a, a coach in personal development anyone who follows my personal Instagram knows that I post a lot of pictures where I'm not wearing many clothes. And it's very interesting that people will tell me, oh, you're perpetuating the problem. And they will say, oh, you know, you're just as, you're, you're, you're a hypocrite because you're posting all these half naked photos, you're never wearing clothes, blah, 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 blah. And I'd like to point out that not everyone who posts that stuff is, is looking for external validation. So what you had said, Reno, I wanted to touch on maybe it was Callan, but someone talked about intention. And my story with my body is that I was a very, I was always the shortest kid in the class, very scrawny, very weak, not athletic. And that's sort of the story that that followed me right through university, right up until I was like in my late twenties, I would say. And my intention for starting to go to the gym, good life first was I had broken up with my ex And I'm like, okay, I'm single again. I need to get the body to like compete, right? So my intentions at that point were certainly more um, externally driven. However, when I I began my self-development journey, maybe uh, seven years ago, one of the 
one of the things that really hit me was on my spiritual path, this has nothing to do with the body, but it does. It was through my spiritual path that I realized that my body, I started to see it as something completely different. I started to see it as the vessel from which the energy that animates me is expressed into the world. I'm always the one who gets woo-woo on this thing. But after that, it really changed the way my intentions for going to the gym, for being healthy, for working on myself. So yes, of course, the byproduct is that, yeah, I go to the gym and I treat my body well, I, I drank less, I started eating better. And the byproduct, of course, is that, you know, I have a um, more well-sculpted kind of body. And, and I think the intention is, is key. I treat my body well because it is literally, I view it as the vessel from which the energy animates me. And I think someone in the Facebook group a few weeks ago asked about uh, affirmations. And my number one affirmation that I say every day is, oh, wait, I just forgot it because I'm nervous now. <laughs> uh, I am a vibrant soul radiating a healthy body. My physical temple is beautiful, strong, and well. And when I go to the gym, that is sort of my uh, underlying motivation and intention. It's, it's not so I can have a six pack. It's not so I can have whatever, you know, physical body. Of course, it's nice. And of course, when I get those compliments, it's great. But I want to point out that not everyone out there is coming from a place of shame and hating themselves to try to look better. Now, I know that there are a lot of people who do. But I can tell you another thing. When that switch happened, going to the gym became so much more fucking fun for me because I wasn't doing it for anyone else. I was doing it for me. I was doing it so that I could look at myself in the mirror and say, fuck, I'm proud of you. Like you, you went from the little scrawny kid that everyone made fun of to, I mean, yes, I'm still short, but you know, I, I'm not so scrawny anymore. And that fills me with a sense of pride. Michael, how tall are you? Five, eight. Okay. Just curious. I'm five, seven and a half. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> the group, I think. I don't know how tall that is, but Callan's very tall. I'm yeah. six three. Wait, yeah. what? Yeah, I'm a big boy. Oh my god, I had no idea. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I had Callan, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. When I met Michael, it was like, hi. I had to like bend over. Yeah, oh it's my great. Gosh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I Oh, oh yeah. sorry. No, please gonna, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to do a little bit about like, yeah, the intention to me, like the consciousness of it is the most important part because you can have two people doing the exact same thing, going to the gym, working out, both look great. But the intention that one is going with, I'm doing this for me. I love myself. This makes me happy. And it's not the focal point. And then the other one who goes and is like constantly chronically like, you know, thinking negative thoughts about themselves and like they have to fit certain standards and like the quality of life within their own mentality switches because they don't have those anxieties to go along with it. So that's just, you know, what I want. And you're, you're programming that into your body. I feel like, you know, like I think about the, the, the important, I mean, in any moment across the board, but yeah, I think, I think about, um, the, the act of like, uh, physical fitness and exercise and things like that. And when you're in that space, I feel like you're particularly receptive to what's occurring, you know? And so intention, like you said, is so important. Like what, yeah, what am I saying to myself while I'm in this space and what energy am I bringing into my workouts? Cause I've had situations and it makes all the difference. Like I've had situations where I've gone into a workout or like a yoga practice or something like that. And I actually end up hurting myself sometimes when I'm not in a really like grounded and intentional and optimal space, you know? So I will, and this is, you know, this is another layer to this conversation about, you know, body, yadi yadi, um, <laughs> is that, and I just lost my train of thought trying to be cute with this joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So, um oh my god i lost it i lost it that's right. okay let, let me see if it comes back oh yeah okay so um nope it's gone <laughs> <laughs> we're real humans oh, guys goodness. everybody watching we're real people it's not scripted <laughs> seriously 
What about yeah, well, Matt? About it, I'll share. I'll share my journey. Yeah, please. It's not going to be short. So grab your popcorn and your tea. Yes. Talk. Spill the tea. Spill, <sighs> spill the, the tea. tea. Gosh. <laughs> I I'm looking at myself right now. I just look like depressed today or something. I don't know. I'm in a very weird energy. So it's going to be. Um, but I feel unfiltered, which is really cool. So both okay so both my parents growing up were bodybuilders um i was exposed to the bodybuilding culture my whole life since i was i remember being five years old and going to the gym and seeing my mom in the mirror and all these guys around and you know posing and stuff like that so it was kind of like almost like ingrained in me from a very young age um that having your body a certain way was very important to your status and your worth and um and that was even before getting involved in the gay community. So I was already very conscious of my body before entering the, the gay community. And then um, when I was 18, I came out. Um, I was just getting um, kind of, well, I was kind of in the middle of an addiction and um, learning how to kind of integrate healthier things into it, but still kind of using it at the same time and uh, became very obsessed with fitness. Um, and my motivation was how my body looked and it was how I could be as masculine as possible. That was a very big aspect of what the gay world showed me um, that it had to be, if I wanted to be desired, it was be masculine, um, look masculine, look like a jock. And one of the most important things to me was to be desired by the outside world because my inside world didn't feel desirable. And um, so that started kind of a pursuit, you know, like a chase, for perfection and my perfectionism expressed itself through fitness and through nutrition and through being a health nut. And, um, I was very, very punitive with my body. I would work out seven days a week, two hour workouts, um, for a decade almost like I was extremely, extremely, um, obsessed with, with training and, you know, the, like I said, the, my, my motivation was this mental image that I had of who I had to become. And until I was 33, so from 18 to 33, I never got there. I never arrived to this destination because I was, I, the, the, the image that I had in my mind was so unrealistic. And what I was comparing myself to or what the mental image was, was these guys in, in magazines that I would, that I would, would be looking at. Um, nowadays, we're looking at them on Instagram. But what people don't realize, uh, and I, I realized this uh, after doing my first fitness show, was that all of these photographs are taken when people are right about to get on stage and they've depleted their body of all their glycogen, um, you know, of everything and their muscles are popping and they look perfect. And then we are comparing ourselves to that when these people have prepped for six months to do this, this, this stage work and, and, or you, you're comparing yourself to people who are on steroids, like Callan said. So it's, it's very unrealistic, but um, you know, I would, I would, I did my first fitness show when I was 33 and what that, what that taught me was, well, I basically bulked until I was 200. Okay. I was 200 pounds and I cut to one, um, 160. So I cut 40 pounds in five months and the journey for me was so, so pivotal in, in helping me see kind of what I was what I was doing and the damage I was doing to my body and to my mind and to my sense of self, because I got to my stage weight and looking back, I had a banging body. I was ripped, but when I was in that body, I didn't feel like I had that body. I, my, my mental image was so skewed of what I, what I actually was that when I would even look in the mirror, I didn't really see what I actually was. And then now looking back, I look back and I was like, wow, like I had a really good body, but I look at my pictures from my shoot and I was like, there's this like, almost like a deadness inside of me, you know, like this, this person that's looking for validation because he doesn't feel worthy to be himself, you know? And um, so that was a very long, very long punitive process that I went through to the point where I had multiple injuries, bad injuries. And my, I was bullying my body into doing all this stuff. And, um, and then it wasn't until I, I really learned how to 
let go of all that. And for me, like I'm very much a black or white person. So for my process of letting go of, of this was to go, I went to Asia and I didn't work out at all. I stopped caring about what I was eating because I was weighing my food. I was weighing myself every morning. It was so obsessive for me to the point where um, I had to let go of it all. And something that was really reinforcing this was uh, posting um, shirtless pictures and relying on external validation. And so for me, I, I went through my, um, this process where I had to, I had to shut off the taps of external validation, I call it. So I had to literally stop posting these pictures for a long period of time um, until I could learn how to post things without the intention behind it being needing something, right? Needing other people to reflect to me, uh, my worth. So that's, that's kind of my journey. And then, you know, where I'm at now, I had a really interesting experience this weekend because I went, um, well, my show was, my show, it's been a month or a year since my show. So basically I've watched my body. I haven't worked out at all. I worked out maybe for like a total of two months in the last year. So my body has completely um, gone back to being like a normal body, you know, like, and that's been really hard on me because it's been, un, I've been undoing this conditioning that I've had of myself for so long. And so this, this weekend I had an experience where a friend, I was out paddle boarding and I had my shirt off. And for the most part, I don't even really think about it, but then we were taking, she took a picture of the four of us and I looked at it and I was just like, oh my God, my, I got this wash of shame come over me. And I was just like, holy crap. It just made me feel very uncomfortable for a moment. And then You know, I, it was just this, this old me came out and I started to kind of bully myself and I started to just not feel worthy. But then I, I quickly, really quickly went through this process where I just started sending love to myself. And I just saw like, um, I can't even describe it. It's really, it's really hard for me to describe. Like it was, it was just this, it was like my worth stepped up to the plate. You know, this, all this work I've been doing and cultivating around my sense of self, it just stepped up to the plate in that moment. And was like, it was like, you're beautiful. Your body is actually beautiful. You know what I mean? And because this mental image that I've had is it's disintegrating, but it's not gone. You know what I mean? Like I'm healing it because it's been, it was 18 years almost that I had this, this, this mental image of who I had to be. And now I'm letting myself be who I am, you know? And, um, so anyways, I just, it, yeah, I'm giving myself grace. And, and what, what it was, where, where I'm at too now is that I'm really drawn towards men that have bodies that are just normal bodies, and they're confident in that body. I'm, I'm so drawn to these guys. And, but yet I for so, so long, I never gave myself that grace, right? It was always like, I have to look this way if I want people to desire me. But yet I desire people who are normal. So why am I giving other people grace and not giving it to myself? So this weekend was just really powerful for that to, to see myself in this, this body that I'm not used to having, but still finding it inside myself to find love for myself and be proud of, you know, what my body does for me and, and everything it does for me, uh, not just how it looks. Um, so anyway, that's, yeah, that's all. I that's beautiful. I just want to yeah. say, Matt, thank you for being so open and honest and genuine about that because we could all see how difficult that was for you mm -hmm. and this really highlights so much the importance of compassion and non-judgment because you know from the outside looking in a person looks at you and goes he has a fantastic body he looks like this he's amazing and then that builds that stereotype in your head of like yeah. oh i need to meet these standards of these people now that they're judging me yeah. And like, that's what so much of the gay community is. And deep down inside, people are struggling like this, but nobody sees that because nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about the fact that like so many people are on like the verge of a mental breakdown simply because they're like, I have to look this way. I have to act this way. I have to do this thing. Yeah. And 
the fact that we've started the gay men's brotherhood and we're yeah. starting these conversations and opening up these things this is exactly what needs to happen because we need to share these things especially not just as men but as gay men we have shit upon shit upon shit thrown at us. So it's like, not only are we not supposed to have feelings and we need to be manly and we need to be masculine, on top of that, we also love other men. And now it's like, okay, well now I need to prove even more that I'm really a man. Now I need to prove even more that I'm masculine enough. Now I need to prove even more to the world. And it's just yeah. all this heaviness that's thrown on everybody. And to be able to step forward and be vulnerable and show people that, there's the flip side of these coins that nobody's looking at. I yeah. think it's an important conversation to be had. And I'm, I'm, I'm just so grateful and blessed that you shared that with us because mm -hmm. I can guarantee there's guys in the group that are going to watch this and they're going to be like, I had no idea. And it's going to trigger something that in their selves that they're going to start looking at. You know, what's interesting is when I went through this journey, so this was, this is all just in the last year and I started to post things about my body changing and, um, I had a lot of people, not a lot of people, but I had a handful of people messaging me being like, you know, some of them were rude about it, but some of them were actually more compassionate. And they were just like, I never thought that you would struggle with stuff like this. You seem so confident and you're good looking and you're this and you're that. But then people were projecting their stuff onto me being like, well, what do you have to complain about? You know, you have it so good and, and that sort of thing. And I just want to let people know that so low self-worth doesn't discriminate, right? We we're all subject to it. And I think if anything, people that um, are, how do I even say this? People, people who, who, who have an appearance that people are drawn to, they're, they're, you're, you're, you're more subject to falling into the trap of external validation because you get it from external all the time when you're growing up that you don't learn how to give it to yourself and you, it becomes addictive. So for me, it's, and I always tell people this, I wrote this in my book. I said, I've overcome a nicotine addiction, a crack addiction, a, 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 almost a sex addiction and an addiction to external validation. And the one to external validation was by far the hardest to break because it's so pervasive. And, um, but that's the one that when I broke it, or I'm still kind of working on aspects of it, but when I've learned to overcome the, the major hurdles of it, it's nothing has given me more, more of a sense of self and more self-worth and, and joy and self-love than that specific overcoming. And, and that's why I'm so passionate about it in this group and why we say no, no shirtless pictures. And we, we don't want to, uh, you know, people to be taught commenting on people's appearances because of this, because we as gay men, we're so entrenched in this. So we need to find space and we need to move back and step back and look at it and say, you know, how much of the stuff that I post on social media is connected to me trying to get validated and develop a sense of self-worth, right? Because it's, it's, it's futile. It'll never stick if you're cultivating it from outside yourself. And it doesn't last because you get that hit, you get that hit of, of whatever feels good but it goes away it's just as quickly as it comes and then you want another one and then another one and then another one which is why i think social media is is i want to say it's bad but you have to really watch the way you use social media i'll say it that way instead mm -hmm. yeah, yeah you have to like be conscious a, right yeah it's like a container well and that's the thing right it's like coming back to intention right is social media the issue or is it like the intention that we're all injecting into that space as we're using it, right? So I think, yeah, like you mentioned before, I think it's everything. And another thing I wanted to point out, and yeah, thank you, Matt, for being so open. Like it, it was really, it was really beautiful to hear your perspective. And I feel like there definitely would have been a time where I would have thought, oh, like, you know, <laughs> If, 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 um, you know, if Matt's feeling this way, like then we're all doomed, you know what I mean? Or something of that nature. But what's so clear to me, um, in the present is that like much as we as gay men go through this, like, it, I feel I, it's clear to me that everyone is, you know, like on, on some level, in some way, we're all trying to keep up with something that is not real, you know, something that is not real, something that is not true, and something that is not actually serving us, you know. Um, sure, in, in terms of like social survival, um, perhaps, right, but at what cost, at what expense, and like, even as I'm saying this out loud, it's, you know, I'm feeling a, a, a lot of emotion around this because 
you know, I look around and I just, it's, it's like, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. You know, when I'm out at the beach, enjoying the sun and the ocean and the trees and like, I can't even do that because I'm so in my head about, and, and again, it's, it's, it's my thinking and I understand that and it's my feeling and I understand that, but how exhausting, you know, to, to be unable to enjoy these experiences because, you know, it's like, Oh, you know, if I, if I eat this food, I'm going to look this way or, you know, or I'm on this beach trying to enjoy myself and I'm looking around at all the bodies that are maybe better than mine and comparing myself to them. And it's like, Oh, where does this come from? You know, why is this here? Yeah. You know, yeah. you know what I found is a great way to learn how to love your body. Mm. You don't love, I'm speaking to everyone out there who may not look in the mirror and say, okay, I look good today. Right. For all of those people, I would tell them, think of all of the ways your body is of service to you on the inside. Mm. Right? Start there. Don't even think about the external piece yet. Think about all of the systems, all of the cells, all of the organs, all of the shit going on in your body that is keeping you alive and well. Start there. That might be um, an easier place to learn how to love your body. The outside is just what people see. That's yeah, fine. exactly. But for me, it really like when I thought about, oh my God, there's this like, how many cells do we have in our bodies and how many systems are going on at once that I have, I don't have to think about telling myself to breathe. I don't have to tell my heart to beat. I don't have to worry about like, the chemicals going on inside it just does it automatically and i learned going back to my point about um my spiritual path when i learned how to love my body from that sense like this is the thing that is keeping me alive and i have to do fucking nothing all it asks of me is that i eat decently drink water and get some exercise and, and rest and i would say start there because if you can start from that place of loving your body then you can grow more and more into loving all of it, including what it looks like on the outside. Mm -hmm. I would add to that and say, um, focus on, well, do, do what Michael says and the next step could be focusing on the, the body part you do like. Everybody has things they like, right? Like you might like your hands or your butt or your legs or whatever, like focus on that. And when you look at yourself in the mirror, send love to that and start there and then build out. It's like kind of being grateful and having gratitude for your body mm -hmm. and i would say oh, yeah. don't play the comparison game it is mm -hmm. always going to be a losing game to play the comparison game because i know for myself when i look at myself in the mirror i'm like yeah i look great like you know i'm not i don't have a six-pack i don't have like giant muscles but i think i look great in the mirror i'm you know a little bit thicker and i like that and i like you know how my body appears but the moment I put myself into the comparison game with somebody else and I'm like, oh, but I don't look like that, that's when it all falls to shit. So as long as I focus on me and just tending my own garden first, that's when, you know, I'm the happiest because I'm like, no, I'm focusing on me and my own garden. And that energy shines through because I've known people who are not the most in shape, the most attractive, the most anything yet they are the like the energy that surrounds them they're like the life of the party without needing or trying to be the life of the party because they just exude this love for themselves and people are attracted to that and people can feel that energy so if you want that that that's the secret is that you need to do it for yourself in yourself and then that will come outwards but so many people think it's going to come outwards and go inwards but that's not the case great advice yeah, I, I, one of the things that's been really lovely for me, um, you know, being out here in British Columbia, and as I mentioned earlier, spending a lot of time at, uh, at the nude beach is, um, and it's something that I bring into my work and I encourage within the work that I do as a coach, and it's self-exposure, you know, so um, one of the ways that I've been able to overcome a lot of the fears and insecurities that I dealt with in the past, I mean, I used to have terrible OCD um, and so exposing myself to the things that I'm afraid of or the things that feel edgy and and coming to recognize them as like non-truths 
has been so powerful for me. So like going to the nude beach and like, like a speedo, for example, like I'll go in like my little, you know, swim brief and, and I'll rock it and I enjoy it, you know? And of course it feels a bit edgy initially, like, Oh, what are they going to say about the brief or, you know, what judgments are people going to have about my body? And, and, you know, and I just show up and I embrace that and, you know, and then taking my clothes off completely and just being, you know, completely naked and exposed to people that I don't know and, and potentially their judgments, which oftentimes they might not even be thinking about me. That's the funniest part about this is that like, they might not even be thinking about me in that way, right? That's all me. What I, it's what I think they're thinking about me, you know? And it's like, they might've had zero thoughts about me. In fact, they might've even thought, damn that guy looks sexy you know what i mean and so that exposure has just been so um liberating liberating exactly it's been so liberating for me and i just keep showing up and i keep putting myself out there and exposing the parts of myself that i think are unworthy of love whether it's in my physical body or my you know my personality right um just putting those out there like this is who i am this is how i look here's what's on offer and like you know and and take it or leave it but this is this is it all of this you know love that yeah yeah because what i want to say about that is one of the practices that i do for myself is I think of things when we make up the stories inside of our heads that aren't real. We all do it. We're always, this person's thinking this, this person's thinking that. It's not true. It's not real because it's not out in the open. I always think to myself, is this fact or is this fiction? When I'm making a judgment against anything or myself and I'm in that space, I'm going, is this fact or is this fiction? Because if it's a fact, okay, I can go with that. But if it's fiction and if it's bullshit I've made up in my head, I'm like, no, this is not real. This is something I made up in my head and I'm not going to entertain this idea anymore. And I change my thought process because we have the power to change our thought process. Nobody else can change it for us because we're the only ones who are up here hundred percent of the time. So one of the best questions I just ask myself is, is this fact or is this fiction? And that goes perfectly along with what you were saying, Reno, like just show up, be your awesome self and don't think of those judgments that other people may or may not be making because is that a fact or is that a fiction? It's fiction. And conversations like this are so revealing of truth. Like we're sitting here and we're, we're talking, you know, we're having this, this, this body talk and what we're recognizing is that, you know, whether you look like me, Matt, Callan or Michael, like it doesn't like, you're dealing with it. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what body bag you come in. And so suddenly it sort of demystifies this big thing. And it's like, oh, we're all going through it. In fact, you might look at someone who's like, you know, the, I would say in some ways the standard of beauty currently in in sort of the, 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 the female market, Kim Kardashian, right? And like, it's funny, here's this woman who, um, you know, is, is said to appear perfect. And yet, like she goes through it, you know, and she's, and, and there's been work done there and all of that. Right. And so it's, it's, and she's absolutely stunning. Uh, you know, I acknowledge that she's absolutely stunning. And, 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 and at the same time, I mean, it, like it, 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 what I get is that it doesn't matter what you look like. We're all human. We all, you know, we're all having this human, you know, the spiritual human experience. We're all susceptible to, societal conditioning and we're all just kind of showing up and doing our best and trying to figure it out and i feel like conversations like this really demystify that you know and 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 suddenly you're like oh okay like i'm not crazy and actually i don't hate myself and i i'm starting to get that that's all thought that that's all conditioning and the other thing i wanted to say too is it's you know going back to what we were talking about um in relation to like the the what's the word like i'll say the mercy that we don't show ourselves but maybe we show other people in relation to their bodies i can remember being with my ex and like he had put on a bit of weight and i used to like lie on his belly and rub it you know and there was this guy that i actually hung out with recently and you know and i stayed with him for a few days and it was the same thing like i would just like i was laying on his belly and like rubbing it like i don't I don't care if you have a six pack or not. It's not about that for me. And I actually think it's sexy when someone's just like, 
I don't just like comfortable in their body. It doesn't it doesn't matter, you know. I prefer the bigger boys. Personally. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> right? Like I have always liked a little bit of a huskier like build and like a little bit rougher around the edges. Yeah. So for me, yeah. I think energetic or attraction is energetic. So if you look at my past and the guys that I've dated, they aren't the sort of standard of beauty that gay culture would have you think um, at all. And for me, attraction is 100% energetic. If I feel the energy with you, it, it doesn't even, your body will just be attractive to me because of the energy that you put out is attractive to me. And I think that when we can really understand that for people who are maybe looking to obtain a better body so that they can appear to be more attractive to others, first of all, do it for yourself first, first and foremost. You know, the goal is you want to look at yourself in the mirror and say, yeah, I, I find myself attractive. But the other thing is you can still be attractive to other people, right? Kind of like we were saying about taking that narrative out of your head. It, like, is this true? Is it true that if I am carrying an extra 10, 20 pounds that I'm not going to be attractive? I don't think that's necessarily true. And I know that there is definitely an issue with uh, um, standards of beauty and the image that the media portrays that we think we should look like, but I would offer and even challenge everyone out there to question that as well. Because the reason why these companies use those models is because it sells. And it's selling because people are buying, right? So, you know, I, I worked in marketing for a good part of my life. They wouldn't be doing this if there was no money to be made in it. Uh, so another thing, I think, Callan, you talked about Canada's Drag Race. For anyone who's watched the recent season, the first season, the pit crew is a very good mix, I think, of different body types and uh, races, which I think is awesome. So I think they've done a great job to echo that point, Callan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, question, question the standard of beauty thing and, and question whether you're buying into it or whether you want to reject it and say, no, I choose not to partake in this. I actually think that, you know, like Callan said, husky guys are attractive. Mm -hmm. they're, and they're more relatable. And that's, that's what I came up against when I was my fittest. Guys were threatened by my body. And you don't connect with people that way because they see you as so far away from where they're at. So it was an interesting thing that I came up against when, when, I, when I was in that place. And but, but people are thirsty for that. But when it actually comes down to it, people don't really want that. And now I'm seeing that. Because I'm like, holy crap, I'm like, I'm so attracted to guys like Talents. I'd like more guys that just have more of a, an earthy body that you can just tell that they're physically active, but they don't spend two hours a day at the gym. They don't weigh their food, <laughs> you know, like they're, they're just intuitively enjoying life and their body reflects that. And I feel like that's what I am now. And that's what I'm wanting to attract into my life as well. So. Mm -hmm. I, and I oh yeah go ahead I was, I was just gonna say on that I even think about when I think about like because I've been with I've been with multiple many people I've I've had my fair share of physical social interactions and from with everybody under the sun all different shapes sizes and backgrounds all of it and I think about it and a lot of the times when I would be talking to this person who had the perfect abs or the perfect look and all these things in my head, there was this background thing that I'm like, media and the outside pressures are telling me I'm supposed to be attracted to you. And there is an attraction, but if a, the energy is not there, it's not there for me. And B, all I would think about is like, okay, but how much energy do you have to do to get this like do I want to be going to the extreme be in a relationship with this person who is going to be at the gym all of the time is going to be chronically thinking about their calorie intake is going to be weighing their food is going to be putting all this effort and energy into it and I'm like that just doesn't sound enjoyable to me I want something like you said Matt somebody who's you know, conscious of it and aware of it and likes you know likes to go rock climbing and oh you know uh going and doing like paddle boarding and going and playing dodgeball and like it keeps them physical and keeps them their body working well but the aesthetic of it the physical look of it isn't the important part it's the cardiovascular it's is my heart working properly is my body doing what i need it to do so that i can continue to enjoy life yeah 
Yeah, Michael, you you said something that really like really stood out to me. And actually, I, I'll, I'll I'll speak to what you had said as well, Colin, because I, I think this idea of like yeah, coming back to like coming back to what's natural, you know, I think is becoming very obviously like um, important, you know, in in these particular times. And I was watching, I think it was Russell, yeah, it was Russell Brand who was. Um, he was commenting on that, and you guys have probably heard it, um, WAP by Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. <laughs> um, it's this new song and it's like, it's, yeah, it's, it's like, it's crazy. It's, 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 pretty, it's pretty out there. Um, and I'll admit, like I've been listening to it a, a lot. Um, <laughs> and, and, th and this is what I wanna speak to because, you know, I was sitting around the kitchen table last night with my friends, we were having dinner. And um, I was saying to them, you guys, I feel so conflicted these days. And I actually have for quite some time now because on the one hand, there's this like really strong pull and appeal to popular culture. Like I love, like I'll watch like little clips on my Instagram from like the Kardashians or like the Real Housewives. Like if you look at my Instagram in the, in the explore section, like you'll see, yeah, there's probably like clips from reality TV um, there's some like yoga and fitness stuff in there, some like food stuff, but that it, it was interesting to look at it and go, okay, hmm, okay what is this saying? Um, and, and so I was saying to them how I felt so conflicted because on the one hand, I'm very conscious and very aware of the fact that like some of the content that I'm consuming, the music I'm listening to, the products that I'm purchasing, um, the ideas that I'm entertaining and, and, and speaking to, um, videos that I'm watching, what have you, etc., are you know feeding the beast, so to speak, right? And and at the same time, there's like a pleasure there, so it's hard to let go of. I'm like, oh no, but like this is so fun or this is so pleasurable. And then on the other side, you know, I'm like, yeah, but I I'm interested in a world that 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 works, you know, a world that's functional and. And part of that may include me having to like stop using certain products or stop watching certain entertainment and that sort of thing. So I find myself in this really interesting space right now where I'm almost like living in between these two worlds simultaneously and like moving between them. And it's a beautiful thing in some ways, but in other ways, I'm having to have these very real conversations with myself about my priorities and what I truly value, you know, and, and is it serving me to continue engaging with this content? Because yeah, in the moment it might feel really pleasurable, but I'm also aware of what happens after I say, watch a clip from like, I don't know, the Kardashians will just say or something on my feed and how, um, you know, that starts to like feed into like physical appearance or the lack of like material things that I have in my life or what have you. So even as someone who like has done the work, so to speak, and you know, who people look at as being this really like aware, you know, self-aware person and, and spiritually conscious person, um, I'm still susceptible to it, you know? And then I, I suddenly find myself feeling so insecure about these aspects aspects of my life and wondering why it's like oh well it might have something to do with what you're consuming what you're watching and the conversations you're having so um you know to to sort of uh, I, I i guess to offer you know a solution to that for myself what i've been practicing is just like spending more time in nature spending more time in like real human connection um you know spending more time in like meditation and just caring for myself and and, and being aware of and not denying when, um, you know, these untruths become obvious, you know, these things that aren't serving me anymore become obvious and, and sitting with that and, and being open to making those changes in my life. Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to add to that. And I would say that everything is energy and we're sponges. We're always soaking up subliminally or consciously these messages so it's from media um from other people so it's very we have to be very very cautious with who we're surrounding ourselves with the content we're consuming um because it's going to have a large impact on who we become and how we relate to the world around us and i think for me when i was making this transformation i unfollowed all my fitness pages 
all the things that was just body after body after body of men yes. doing this stuff. So I don't follow any of that anymore on my page. And unfortunately, there's there were some people that are friends that I had to unfollow because for me, it was it was sinking into my psyche. And then my psyche is the place to where I act from and to where I feel from and where I think from. So I had to be really... And I always tell this to my clients. So I said, be careful and put a filter up with who you're allowing into your field because your field is the template to which you act and live from. So we have to be very cautious of that. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to just add on to that, that that's exactly what I did with my Instagram as well. Like I used to follow certain ones and I was just like, why am I following this person? Like, yeah, they're physically attracted, but they're not offering me anything. So I just went and I unfollowed so many that weren't offering me anything other than their physical selves. I do still follow a couple of them, but because they have, there's a personality there, there's an energy there. They offer more than just, this is my physical appearance. They have comedy, they have something, they have like yeah. something else that they're focusing on. That's not just their body. They have other fun things in there and then cultivate. Like I follow certain hashtags of like, you know, um, gays in love or true love and I see a lot of on my Instagram I follow a lot of Instagrams of like gay families like with two dads and their kids because that's one of the things that I want to I don't necessarily want kids but I want to have that energy in my life I want to have that you know family values and like that kind of thing so I follow those Instagram stories so I can see it and bring it into my attention and so that it's constantly resonating within me and the more you're conscious with what you're looking at and you are the active programmer of what you're consuming the more you can create and cultivate the life that you want to have because you are seeing it again and again and again and repetition is king when it comes to you know any of this yeah choices we all Hashtag make choices take choices um, exactly yeah and that is i think i think we could all agree that you know i think the cornerstone of, of what we do is reminding people that they have a lot more of an active role that they play in what they consume and what they think and what they do and so i would i would echo everything that you guys just said about that and you know i do that myself i always ask myself what value am i getting from following this person this this account um sure sometimes there are attractive men but there's there's like you said a, might be something else that i'm getting from it um so yeah i 100 percent agree with that and i encourage everyone to go after this after they watch this and go through their social media and, and notice this, when you're scrolling, just notice how you feel when, you're what, when, when you see that image. Does it make you feel good? Does it make you feel shitty about yourself? Does it make you feel, oh fuck, oh, you know, how does that guy have like 18 abs when I have like, you know, none? And if that's what you think, then question, is this useful for you? Is this useful to keep following this? What, what am I getting out of this? Mm -hmm. And there's, I think there's value in aspirational content, but again, like you said, to be conscious of how you're feeling, you know, because there are certain people like, I mean, their fitness accounts I follow where, you know, these men are like very flexible, you know, they're very flexible, they're very agile, um, they're doing really amazing things in their body. And I think when, when, when I look at like, when I look outside of what, um, you know, the sort of, uh, uh, what's the word surface layers of, you know, my physicality. What's true for me is that what is what's true for me in life in general. I like, I want to feel, I want to feel realized and I want to feel radiant and I want to feel free and I want to feel creative and, 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 and autonomous and fluid and flexible and strong in my body. Like that's, what's important to me, you know, not that I have a six pack, the six pack might be a byproduct of that. Right. Um, you know, of, of me moving toward those things, toward those values, but, but it's not, it's not like, it's not the goal, you know, that's, that's not, yeah, that, that doesn't feel, that doesn't feel true to me. Maybe in the moment that I'm comparing myself to someone, but, but it's not, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And on this topic of social media, I <laughs> highly suggest everybody who's watching right now 
So go out there and follow our Instagram, Gaiman's Brotherhood, if you're not already. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you should subscribe. Hit that subscribe button for us. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, share it around with all your friends. Give us a like. Tell people about it. Talk about it. The more that we can share our message and share what we're talking about here, the more we can help shift these things that we all want to see um, shifting in the gay community. Because without knowledge, without power, or without knowledge, there is no power. So people need to be educated first in order for things to shift and to move. So subscribe, follow, get us on Twitter. We're all over the place. Um, does anybody want to add anything else in there that I forgot? No? We're Thank good? you for giving us uh, you know, almost an hour of your time. We really appreciate you guys joining us for these. Uh, we love doing them. Um, I know that we all do, and uh, we're looking for more. So actually, you know what? If anyone has any uh, suggestions for content that you want to you want to uh, you want to hear us talk about? Please uh, drop us a comment, send us a DM, tweet, whatever you want to do. We'd be happy to hear about it. Perfect. All right. Thanks for sticking with us, everybody. Until next time. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.